Hi, I'm Darnell with Wave Over Recipes, and this is my review of the Gourmia 8 Quart Digital Air Fryer. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Alright, so things are all unboxed, and basically it's just a pull out basket air fryer, so it's got a crisper tray in there. Pretty big, 8 quart, so pretty large basket here, but we'll do measurements on a little bit and show you more of that. But basically for paperwork it comes with a user manual. It's a uh, pretty well put together user manual in my opinion that gives you all the details, has some warning paperwork and whatnot like that. Then it comes with a recipe book. In this recipe book, let's see how many pages this is. It is a pretty nice looking recipe book. That's for sure. 65 pages. 65 pages, and it's got like picture on one side, recipe on the other side, so there's a lot of good looking stuff in there, I guess, if you wanted to try out some of their recipes, but they give you a lot to work with, that is for sure. Now I want to show you the power plug and cord. The cord's pretty long, pretty long cord here, and the plug is a polarized two-prong cord. And the cooker is 1700 watts. So for a 8 quart basket air fryer, I would expect 1700 watts to do it just fine. And the temperature ranges on this cooker are 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That varies based on function. And I'll say for some of you who may have seen like air fryer ovens that do 450 or 500, given the smaller form factor, 400 should be just fine and probably will still cook faster than many air fryer ovens I would expect, but we will see. The time ranges for this cooker are 1 minute to 24 hours. That varies based on function. And even though this is like not an oil fryer, you don't do any deep frying in here, you know, with filling with oil or anything, they do mention that you can spritz your food with oil if you want to give it some added crispiness. And they mention to use oil from an oil mister, not from like one of those spray like manufactured spray bottles. They say that that type of cooking spray may damage the nonstick coating on the cooker and I'll also say that that type of spray may not be so good for your health. That is something you definitely look into. I made a whole video about uh, cooking tips and health myths here on the channel and uh, I don't use manufactured cooking sprays at all. But moving along, they mentioned that you should keep four inches of free space around the cooker all around and so now I'm going to basically show you around the cooker so you can see how it looks all around on this side there's basically nothing on that side there's basically nothing there is an air gap kind of here in the top so like when you get around here around the side and the back there's an air gap around the, this top part I guess that's where air is going in and then Back here on the back, it looks like your exhaust is back there on the back. So that's your look around the cooker. Now I'm going to give you a close-up view of the cooker. Basically, you see all this will light up when we do the plug-in. I'll show you that. It's got like just one sing single handle, so it's pretty simple. And you got your big basket there with your crisper tray inside of there. We'll take a quick look inside. We'll see. Let's see if I lift it up what you can see up there. You see the big heating coil and the fan up there. So that's basically how things are heated up. You see over there on the left side over here there's uh, the ambient probe up there to keep track of temperature. So that's all there is inside. So now I have the Gourmet next to the Caloric 8 quart air fryer. And so I basically wanted to just show you a side by side of these. You can see the Gourmet is just a tad bit taller than the Caloric. I'm going to do some measurements just to measure around things a bit so we can see. And when I go over the top of the Caloric, I'm getting about 11 inches. Let's see if I go over the top of the Gourmet. Go over the top of the Gourmet. Maybe it's just a tad more than 11 inches front to back. I'm going to the end of the handle. I've got, let's see, 
a little over 13 inches, maybe 13 and a half inches or so. For the Gourmia, sorry if my arm was in the way. Same thing, about 13 to 13 and a half inches. For height, we see, um, like I was saying, just a little taller. So, like the Caloric is like maybe just a little under 14 inches, and maybe the Gourmia is just maybe a little over 14 inches. So, kind of similar in the, uh, I guess, the size. I'm going to do size down at the base, down at the bottom. It's a little wider at the bottom, right? So, let me, let me turn it around here. The base we see, let's see, maybe 10 inches on the caloric. Let's see what we have with the Gourmia. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little over 10 inches. Yeah. A little over 10, maybe 10 and a half inches there. So now I'm going to take the caloric calls it a trivet. The Gourmia calls it a, basically a crisper tray. You just use different terms for the exact same thing. But I want to basically show you the size difference of the two. I think they're they're virtually the same size. So let's see if I take the one from the Gourmia try and put it into the caloric. It's kind of not fitting. I think it might be a little, a little too big, I think. Let me try and take the one from the caloric and put it in the gourmet. Let's see. So putting it in. So, I don't know. I think it's just, maybe just the way they're shaped. One won't go into the other. So neither, neither can fit into the other. As far as that's concerned, I'll do some quick measurements of the inside of the basket just so that you can. Sorry for any banging noises, but give you a bit of an idea of what's going on inside. So let's do depth first. Let's see, we got about, well, let me get this here again. About four, maybe a little, a little under five inches in depth there. Let's try it with the gourmet. Make sure that the crisper tray is all the way down. We've got, well, it's showing four inches. Let me make sure that thing's all the way, all the way in there. Flush. Maybe it's not down far enough. <laughs> but let's try again. Pretty sure it's in there now. Yeah, it's about four inches. So with the caloric, you definitely have more depth. I'm going to go across here, and this is the gourmet. Yeah, about 10 inches across. The caloric going across. About 10 and a half inches across on the caloric. So a little further across. A little more room across. Let's do this way. We got about a little more than 10. A little more than 10 inches that way. So let's see on the Gormia here. We got a little more than 10 that way. But it seems like an overall measurement. The caloric has the bigger basket overall. That's pretty interesting. They're both eight quarts, but one seems to have, especially due to the depth difference, a bit more room. So that's pretty interesting comparison there. I'm going to try a nine inch bake pan. Now we know it fits in the caloric, but I'll just show here, and anyone who has not seen it, full review of this cooker here on the channel, as well as tens of others. So, we see the 9 inch big pan fits into the caloric. Let's see about the gourmet. Alright, the 9 inch big pan fits in the gourmet too. Late. With those measurements, it should. But, wanted to just try it right there anyway. Okay, so now I've got a five pound frozen chicken. We'll be cooking it here in this video because it's frozen, but just going to do a fit test and let's see if this fits into the gourmet. So we got our chicken in there and let's close up. So five pound chicken does fit in there. So now I'm going to do an initial plug in here. So Got our plug, gonna get it plugged in, we'll see what happens. I think it may be better to, well we'll see once it 
plug it in if I need to turn the light off for you to be able to see things better. But the little power button lights up here, so you press that to light things up. I'm thinking I need to turn the light off so you can see better. So now I'm pretty sure you can see everything very well. This is the power button here that I was mentioning. Whoa, sorry about that. But basically now we've got it on, so that's how you power things on. Now if you need to toggle between Fahrenheit and Celsius, you hold the time and temp button until it switches. So I'm just holding it now to see. All right, you see it switched over to 200 Celsius. Now if I hold it again for some time, we'll see if it switches back. It switches to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now there's a way to mute so that we stop all this crazy beeping. So if I hold the stop cancel button, it's supposed to mute itself. So we'll see if it goes into a Alright, so it should be muted now, Lord willing, stop all that beeping. But they do mention that even after you mute it, that the air fryer will still beep for guided cooking prompts. That's the prompts when you need to turn your food and stuff like that. It'll still prompt for those, and we'll go through those later. And we're going to just keep things muted. But they mentioned that when you want to turn it completely off, of course you just press. They said press and hold, but you don't even need to hold it. But you see I pressed the button and it didn't beat. I turned it on, no beat. So that's pretty good. We definitely got all that noise out of the way. So now I'm going to do a temperature test. I've got a temperature probe here I'm going to pop in. Looks like the light turns off when you open it up. We'll just stick things in there, turn it on. And we'll just go ahead and do a regular old air fry. I'm going to up the, well I just press this and it goes to basically temperature. I press this other one and it goes over the time. I'm going to up the time to 30 minutes just to have that as the setting. I'm going to turn off preheat and I'll talk about that more later. But you press the preheat button, preheat turns off. Press the turn reminder button, turn reminder turns off. And go ahead and hit start. And basically that means that it just starts going without the preheat. And I'm just going to let it run for a while and we'll see what happens. So things have been going for about 15 minutes so it definitely should be good and hot at its uh, target temperature by now. I just want to feel around it. Top of it, yeah I mean I'm fine up here up top. I mean it's not cold but it's not even really warm, it's just, it's fine. I mean, I guess I feel that it's, you know, there's something in there that's not cold, but it, it's fine. This side, it's warmer on this side, it's not hot. I can keep my hand there. Other side, same thing. Up front here, I think the door is hotter. I don't want to really keep my hand there. I can put it there, but I don't want to keep it there. Around the back, back feels about the same as the sides. And up here where the vents are, I can feel the air being sucked in. The air going out the back is pretty warm. I mean, it's not like hot, not burning hand hot, but it's pretty warm. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up and try. I, I will mention, I heard my uh, temperature thing being knocked around a little bit in there. Not like in a swirling fan knock, knock around, but like it got knocked over basically. I heard it get knocked around a couple of times. So I'm going to open up quick and try and check it. We see the auto pause. Let's see if I can get this thing turned around. Alright. We see it's reading just a little under 400. So it's a little short of 400. It was face down. But that's basically the deal. So putting it back in. We see the cooker basically picks up where it left off as far as cooking. If I want to make changes on the fly, yeah, I can adjust my time up. If I hit the temp thing, I can adjust that up or down. So I can make changes on the fly pretty easily in the middle of a cook. Let's say I turn the cooker off and let's say I turn it back on and I hit air fry. You see it went back to the original settings of 420 minutes with the preheat and turn automatically on. So this cooker has no memory.
So earlier I showed you when you select a cook function like air fry and it's showing preheat and turn indicators that you can turn those off by hitting the preheat button and the turn reminder button in advance to turn them off. But let's say you keep them on. Basically if you keep them on like you keep preheat on and it reaches a preheat temperature and it tells you to put the food in. If you don't open and put food in it will proceed and start cooking. Likewise with the turn indicator if it tells you hey turn the food over because you got the turn indicator on and you don't respond and turn the food over then it's going to just continue cooking so keep that in mind now basically you want to press the stop cancel button once when you want to pause without pulling the door open you can of course pull the door open to pause but if you just press the stop cancel button once during the cook it will basically pause things as well and you can press the start button to continue cooking again if you pause it that way and also if you press the start well the stop cancel button twice during the cook it'll end the cook if you press it once it's pause if you press stop cancel twice it'll end the cook and like I said pulling out the basket putting it back in you can do that you saw how that works and so now I want to go over each of the functions with you in some greater detail give you some more information about each of them we got the air fry here as the first function the temperature ranges for air fry 107 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit cooking times 1 to 60 minutes it has a preheat as you see and you can turn that off as you saw same with the turn reminder the next function I'm going to talk about is the fries function and you see each function has a different starting time and temp that it just kind of recommends for you but the fries function also 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit one minute to 60 minutes it has the preheat and the turn reminders turned on but you can turn those both off for the fries function as well then with the wings function pretty similar with 170 to 400 one minute to 60 minutes also has the reminders that you can turn off now going on to the bacon function with the bacon function you see a little different uh, initial time and temp there I guess that's some thin bacon judging by the time and temp they give you but uh, basically also 170 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit 1 to 60 minutes and it has the preheat indicator is off as you see there is no preheat showing so preheat is off but you can turn it on if you so choose and also with the turn reminder well it said the turn reminder is on I thought in the in the manual but yeah you can turn it on though but it was off as you saw when we we hit the bacon function so both are off by default seafood function also 170 to 400 degrees 160 minutes has the preheat and turn reminder you can turn them both off if you so choose next function that we have is the vegetables function and with the vegetables function you uh, basically have the 170 to 400 1 to 60 minutes and the preheat and the turn reminder are on and you can turn them both off the next function we go over here to the other side we have bake and with bake we have 170 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit but the cooking time we have one minute to two hours of cooking time on bake as you see you have preheat which you could turn off if you choose the turn reminder is off if you choose you could hit the turn reminder button you could turn it on if you wanted to turn it on the next function is the roast function and with the roast function you have 170 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit you have a cooking time of one minute to two hours you have the preheat that you could turn off if you want you have the turn reminder that you could turn off if you want next we have the broil function with the broil function things are locked at 400 degrees Fahrenheit you can't turn the temperature down on broil it's locked at 400 and fixed there 160 minutes has a preheat as you see you could turn that off and likewise with the turn function it's on you could turn it off if you feel you want to turn it off next we have dehydrate 
Dehydrate goes from 90 degrees to 170 degrees Fahrenheit max. Cooking times are 30 minutes to 24 hours. As you see, there's no preheat. And you cannot turn it on. And there is no turn. And you can turn turn on. So you can turn turn on. But you can't turn the uh, preheat thing on. It doesn't even light up. I can't even, you know, there's no option for preheat. So that's how it is with dehydrate. Next we'll do the reheat function. With the reheat function, 170 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 1 to 60 minutes. Preheat is off. You can turn it on. Turn reminder is off. You can turn that on as well. The keep warm function. With that, you have a cooking temperature between 150 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. You can do from 1 minute up to 8 hours on keep warm. The preheat is off. You cannot turn it on. You see it's not lit up. The turn reminder is off. You cannot turn the turn reminder on either. You see it's not lit, turned off. So those are all the functions on this cooker. So now I'm going to do a toast test here. I've got a slice of my almond flour whole wheat bread. It's refrigerator cold. So might take a little extra to heat it up. The cooker is like very lightly warm. I mean it's been cooling down for a good while so it's like you know it's not hot at all. It's like just a little teeny tiny warmer than outside of it. So putting the bread on in there I think it's cool enough to say it's cool. I mean I'd probably have to wait overnight or something for it to get totally cool but that's that's nice that it holds heat well. So for making the toast, I'm just going to try like a bake. I'm just going to try it like a bake. But I'm going to up the time, or well, the cooking temperature up to 400. I'm going to cancel the preheat. And for the time, I'm going to bring that down to, I'm going to do 7 minutes. I'm going to go a little aggressive. We'll see what happens. And I'm going to hit start with that. Will I burn my bread up? We'll find out in a moment. All right, the cook is coming to an end, and so you hear it does one beep, even though I've got things muted. So you still get one beep when your food's done. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out now. We'll see how this bread looks. I don't want to have that basket on the bottom of the counter. All right, this is how the bread looks on the front there. Didn't really fill in there on the back. That's how it looks. So. That's basically one way to toast your bread. You do get a little toasting on the back there, so that's nice. I'm going to feel down bottom here. I'm not feeling any heat at all down bottom. So that's pretty nice. There's no warming of the counter at all from just now using the cooker. So that's something good. So I'm putting together some cookie dough for some peanut flour chocolate chip cookies. I've got the ingredients on the screen. If you want to see how to make these more in depth, there's another video here on the channel where I go into further detail making these in a different cooker. But basically going to turn this cooker on. I'm going to hit the bake function and I'm going to let it do its preheat. And for the temperature I'm going to up it to 350. For the cooking time, I'm hoping I need less than 20, but I'm just setting it to 20. I'll probably check it sooner. I'm going to hit start with that. Let it do its preheat, and then I'll start getting these in. All right, preheat's done. Open it up. I'm going to have to basically spray with my extra light olive oil. And basically the sprayer I use is a pump sprayer. It's just straight extra light olive oil in a pump sprayer that I pump myself to make it sprayable. Like I said, I don't use those uh, manufactured aerosol oil sprayers at all. So basically, I think things won't, won't hit the counter. Well, I don't want to really get it on the counter. I think what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to kind of go over to the side to put all the cookies out into the basket but I'll I'll put it back in a moment with you. Alright so I got them laid out as best I can. 
and going to basically close it on up. Let things go ahead and cook. Let me move it up a little bit. But with this basket, it seemed a little harder getting my cookies laid out, opening it up. Um, with some of the basket air fryers, you can open them up and kind of get things in there a little easier. This one I felt it'd be easiest to get things all in by setting things on the side on the uh, stove top and just kind of use that as an area to finish prepping. So we'll let things cook for a while and I'll bring you back. All right, so things have been cooking for about 12 minutes. So I'm gonna just check. Wow, look at that. <laughs> they're like really done on the top there. I'm gonna try and carefully. Yeah, I think they're done. The way they feel, just tapping the top. I think they're done. But you see, they got a pretty good cooking on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them all out and get them onto a plate here. Let me see if I can do that without making any sort of a mess. Let's see. Like, all right, got one out. So I'm just going to show you one really quick because this is one you see the top's really well done. Let's see the bottom. Bottom looks a lot less, you know, overcooked. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these out. All right, so I got them all out, and even though I've done cookies and basket air fries before without lining the bottom of the cooker. In this case I probably should have lined this uh, crisper rack because a lot of the flour kind of went down through some holes there. But all the cookies are out and I'm going to let them cool down. Okay so I got the light on so you can see the cookies. You see they got a pretty good browning on top but we're going to thank God for these cookies. The bottom looks decent. I'm going to go ahead and taste one. Right, they're still kind of warm, so I'm trying not to burn myself chewing. But as you can see inside, totally done. Not overcooked inside at all. Just got some extra browning on top. But they turned out pretty well, all things considered. Okay, so I've got a codfish fillet. Got some extra light olive oil, some Old Bay seasoning that I'll be oiling and seasoning it up with. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to start preheating the air fryer here. So I've hit the seafood. It's giving me 375, 10 minutes um, with the preheat and the turn. Um, I'm going to push the time out just in case to uh, 15 minutes because it's frozen. Since it's frozen, give it another five minutes. So I'm going to hit start. Let it start preheating while I get things prepared. All right, preheat's done. Preheat took preheat took about three minutes, by the way. So we'll let that go ahead and cook for a while. All right, halfway time to turn. So we go in, let's see how it looks, put things over, let it continue. Alright, the cook has come to an end. I'm going to use my thermopen to do a quick check of the meat temperature. The meat is cold, I mean it's like 90 some degrees, that, wow, that's chilly. That's uh, Less than stellar for having a preheat, I'll say that. Let's, uh, we'll go back to seafood, 375. Um, I'm going to give it like 7 minutes. Kill the preheat, kill the turn reminder, and just let it go. But, wow, that's a little weak, I'll, I'll say that. That is definitely, things are coming a little weak as far as that's concerned, for sure. We'll, we'll let it go. Alright, so now it's been, I guess, 22 minutes total with the preheat in addition to the 22 minutes. 
So I'm going to go ahead and check the temperature of the meat now. I think maybe parts of the meat. I'm, maybe it's where I'm hitting the. Where I'm hitting the. Yeah, I think it's where I'm hitting. I think some spots I'm hitting air versus other spots hitting hitting a good piece of meat because it looks really done now. So I think it's done. I think there's some parts that maybe I'm hitting air when I'm testing now versus not hitting air. But I'm going to stop it there and basically see how it looks here. So that's a done deal. Give it a moment to rest. Alright, so I've turned the light on so that uh, I'll do a quick taste. I gave it a few minutes to just kind of rest, reabsorb juices, cool down. See the edges are kind of a little more charred than the interior of the meat, but we'll thank God for this and go ahead and taste. Alright, it's interesting because like I said, the edges are kind of charred, but the inside is pretty pretty moist inside. So pretty good mix of uh, the I guess really heavily cooked edge, but the inside is not. But still, you know, it took like 22 minutes with the preheat. It was a bit long. And uh, I don't know, I guess you know I've seen some other cookers do it a little a little better in less time but uh, all the same it still got it done now I want to talk to you about cleaning the cooker basically they recommend you clean it after every use they say the basket and the crisper tray are top rack dishwasher safe although personally I wash everything by hand they say don't use anything abrasive and they say like use a soft soapy dish uh, dish rag to uh, disc co off to clean things off and then a wet one to wipe off the soap residue and they say that you can soak the basket and the crisper tray if you need to all right so let's talk about the warranty cooker comes with a one-year warranty basically on a case-by-case -case basis gourmet decides how they'll handle things for your specific situation so no telling you know how things will be handled until you have to call with your issue and they mentioned that the warranty is for the USA only I don't know if you know maybe when they sell in other countries they have warranties for those countries but if you get one out of the USA the warranty specifically says this is only for the USA so that's something if you get it shipped overseas or something like that to keep in mind now I do want to point out that in the toast test my almond flour whole wheat bread takes longer to cook than store-bought white bread a lot of people see me do testing of toast with my homemade almond flour whole wheat bread they think it's like the store-bought stuff and they're like oh wow it took so long to cook well that's because it's a bit more resilient than your store-bought white stuff that is uh, we won't go there I'll just say I'll stick with my homemade bread now basically this cooker overall it you know, took a little longer it seemed with some things to cook and the temperature test was a little lower than uh, 400 I think even though the the uh, temperature gauge fell over and all still you know and I guess they have their temperature gauge up it's kind of higher at the top so they're reading the higher heat up at the top whereas mine is reading what's down where the food is but all the same it can get the jobs done but maybe not as hard as not as hard to cook as some other basket air fryers are concerned so basically I hope that you did like the video nothing in this video is sponsored nothing in my videos is sponsored and so in the video description there are lots of ways to help channels such as my cookbook merch membership donations merch Amazon shop link to get cookers pay the same price help the channel even if you just use it as a jump off point to buy other things still can help the channel out so with all of that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share the video with a friend, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon, and good eating.